Okay. Here's the points on the back after you take it out of the little housing. Of course, take it out of the console, take it out of the housing. This is what you're left with. These are the points. I took the uh, uh, DC electricity off. Just took it up to a try to a little 12 volt. You can also use one out of a computer. I don't want to go into that, but and you can get those to do other things besides 12 volts. But there's lots of uh, videos on YouTube about that anyway. But anyway, see the uh, points have closed now. I'm going to pull them down manually just to show you. That's what it does when the electricity is, of course, hooked up. And then you can see back there in the back the gears, the little escape mechanism working. And uh, what I wanted to show people is uh, you can just uh, file these points down usually with like an emery board. Mine were so toasted I couldn't do that. I had to make a new point, put it on the bottom right here. I'd read on the internet a guy just put a blob of solder there and I tried that but that only lasted a few days letting it run 24-7 and solder is not designed for that so it just burnt it away within a matter of about three days. So and, and they're riveted on there from the factory so you can't easily replace them but what I did is get an RCA cable uh, plug and uh, cut a section out of here. Don't use the rounded top because points don't come with the rounded top. I guess that makes a difference. I'm not the engineer, so I just keep with as close as I can to what they do. Anyway, you just cut a section out of here, about 1 16th of an inch. There's a little ruler down here. <clears throat> you can look up, of course, what a 16th of an inch is, but that is about the thickness that you need is 1 16th and then this RCA cable is already about the same diameter it's about the same diameter as you can see possibly I'll see when I'm editing this and viewing it back it's about the same diameter as the original points so just cut a section out of here and then you solder your new point keeping it as flat on both sides as you can. You can file it down some if you don't saw it off. Uh, you know, perfectly straight, perfectly flat on both sides. But you can just file it down and then solder it on top of the original, if yours are as wasted away as mine were. There's that little main spring when these points pop open, this brass spring. And most of you guys, uh, your clock, the gears themselves, you know, they're made out of brass and it's probably in really good shape because your, your clock probably got, the points got wasted back in the early 70s. You know, if it's a, like a 67 like mine or whatever, you know, uh, say five, it, when, when the battery ran low and people didn't know, what would happen is uh, it, it burns out those points because the battery's low. And that's another thing I'm going to do. When I reinstall this, I'm going to, uh, I have read on the internet, you hook up a fuse to the line that goes to your positive terminal right here. Put a, like a 1 amp or a 2 amp fuse, and if your battery ever goes low again, uh, uh, it'll, of course, burn out the fuse and save your points so you don't have to hassle with... Uh, with trying to repair the thing. And then I'm going to show you real quick right here on the back. There again by the escape mechanism is your little adjustment lever. Mine is right here. It's almost all the way to the top I found. I ran this for several days and I kept on adjusting this lever. It just I could pull it all the way down to right here to this uh, to this base plate 
and that's as high as it'll go is, is this plate up here and all points in between and it'll adjust the speed of your clock at all points in between. So just be patient with it, get it running, hook it up to a, 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 you know, a 12 volt DC, put the positive on here and the negative someplace to where it's not sparking and flipping out and all, of course, but and just let it run for a few days and, and, and see how many uh, uh, minutes it gains per day or every five or six hours or whatever you want to do. There's a number of ways you can do it. Um, and uh, you can get this thing running pretty uh, accurately. You know, I'm happy with the time it's keeping right. Excuse me, with the time it's keeping right now. So anyway, I wanted to pass this information along to uh, you guys out there, you know, with your classic cars from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And that's all. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll make a short video on, on cutting this RCA cable. Somebody recommended that to me. Psh, that I was showing them the, the preview of another tape I'd made. But anyway, they were like, how do you do that? So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll show how I, I cut this with the metal grinder or metal cutter. It's hooked up to the uh, air compressor. and uh, Like I say, and you just solder it on there. I don't think I need to hold everybody's hand on how to, if you've got a classic car you work on. So, good luck. I hope you get it running instead of converting over to uh, one of those uh, quartz conversions. Yeah, I know those are more accurate, but I like original. That's just me. Adios.